Hello friends, welcome to Storytime with the Met. My name is Miss Kay and I'm so glad to see all of you. I'll be reading for you today and while the Met is closed, we hope that you'll join us every Thursday at 12 p.m. for different story and activity. So if you're all comfy, we're going to get started. We begin our story time like we begin our story times at the museum, which is by singing our story time song. You can sing and clap along with me, and it goes to the tune of This Old Man. Ready? Welcome, friends. Get ready, get set for story time at the Met, where we love to read and sing and look at works of art and picture books. We use our eyes to look and see we we'll use our ears to hear stories. Now we'll take a seat and give a shh. Let's begin with our first book. Thank you everyone so much. Our story for today is called Wolf Wolf and it's written and illustrated by John Rocco. And I'll be reading aloud to you and we can look at all the pictures together. story is Wolf, Wolf. The hungry old wolf was too slow to snatch birds and too stiff to chase rabbits. So he tried growing food in a small garden. Bah! Wheat everywhere. There are so many I can't even find the vegetables, the old wolf growled, rubbing his empty stomach. As he yanked dandelions from where his carrot should have been, his ears began to twitch. Wolf! Wolf! The old wolf fumbled with his hearing aid. Who's calling me? I don't remember having any friends on this side of the mountain. In fact, the old wolf didn't have any friends on any mountain. Maybe they have some food to share. A mere morsel would do, he said. His bones creaked and his joints cracked as he slowly made his way towards the voice. He's got a long way to go. It's a beautiful place to take a walk, don't you think? Can you think of some places you might like to go for a walk? After a tiring climb and two stubbed toes, the old wolf came to a clearing. What's this? A boy with goats? The old wolf drooled with excitement. Surely he can spare one for a hungry wolf. Before he could step into the meadow, a group of villagers came clambering up the hillside. The old wolf stayed hidden behind the bamboo as the villagers surrounded the boy. Where's the wolf? A villager cried out, waving a stick. Did he take any goats? Another gasped. <laughs> what wolf? The boy giggled. There is no wolf. We ran up this hill for nothing, the eldest wheezed. Call us only if you see a wolf, scowled and scolded another. The old wolf wasn't fond of angry villagers, especially ones with sticks, so he limped down to a nearby stream. Kids, <laughs> always playing tricks on old folks and old wolves. He groaned as he soaked his tired feet. Before long, the boy's cry came again. Wolf, wolf, the wolf is taking the goats. Another wolf is taking those tasty goats. The old wolf couldn't stand the thought and quickly hobbled back to the meadow. Villagers were already there, huffing and puffing from running up the hill. Where's the wolf? Are the goats okay? The villagers gasped. What wolf? The boy laughed. 
From behind a tree, the old wolf watched the villagers stagger back down the hill. There's got to be a way to get one of those scrumptious goats from that trickster, he thought. Perhaps through a trick of my own. The old wolf sat down to work out a plan and was soon snoring away and dreaming of Mushu goat, double goat dumplings. Wolf! Wolf! The boy yelled out again. Ah! Can't even enjoy the goats in my dreams. That boy is worse than weeds, the old wolf growled. He stretched his aching legs and went to the meadow once more. Perfect. Not a villager in sight. The old wolf slowly crept out towards the boy and the goat swiftly scattered to the far edge of the meadow. Were you calling me for lunch? The old wolf grinned. Wolf! 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 There's a wolf! The boy cried as he scrambled up a tree. Quit your yelling, said the wolf. Those villagers won't believe you anyway. But, but this time it's true. They have to believe me. You're a real wolf and you're going to take the goats. The old wolf knew his legs were too tired to chase down goats. He carefully lowered himself onto a nearby rock and gazed up at the boy. His lips curled in a smile. The villagers are only going to believe you if you really are missing a goat. I can help you with that, he grinned. Just one goat? The boy leaned forward on the branch. I'm a picky eater. That plump one looks just about right. But you have to bring it to me because if I go over there, I might change my mind and grab them all. Bring it to you, the boy asked. On the other side of the mountain, the old wolf said, you'll find a small garden. Just tie it to the fence post there. And he started home. The next morning, the old wolf was overjoyed to see the plump goat nibbling away in his garden. Good fortune at last, he said. Today I'll feast like an old wolf should. He rubbed his paws together and the wolf's mouth watered and his stomach grumbled as he crept up behind the goat. Suddenly, he noticed something remarkable. Everywhere he looked, there were ripe and juicy vegetables. Baby bok choy, beautiful eggplant, ready to pick carrots, and even his favorite, onions. Do you all have a favorite vegetable? I like asparagus myself. The old wolf couldn't believe his eyes. Then he saw the goat happily eating the last few weeds. She saw him too and froze in fear. You ate my weeds, the old wolf said. But why didn't you eat the vegetables? Sorry, I'm a picky eater, she said. Please don't eat me. The wolf looked at the plump goat and then at all the juicy vegetables and back at the goat again. He sighed. Don't be sorry. You did my work for me. What's one breakfast compared to delicious vegetables for the rest of my days? The wolf smiled as he untied the goat. I could use a friend like you. Plus, double goat dumplings are overrated anyway. The end. <laughs> Thank you all. It's such great listening, friends. And you know, the story actually reminds me of a work of art we have at the museum. It's an interesting piece of art because it's actually clothing. It's a belt, like so, or actually a belt hook. And it features a wolf and an animal called a doe, that's spelled D-Z-O. And it's not quite a goat, but still something a wolf might find tasty. It's a cross between a yak and a cow. 
Pretty interesting. Can you think of some animals you'd like to cross? Maybe a cow and a goat? Or a wolf and a yak? Or a rhinoceros and a zebra? It's interesting stuff to think about when we look at art, huh? All right, so before we say goodbye, I have an activity for you to do at home if you want to do more things involving wolves. I like wolves very much. So I'm going to show you how to do a wolf shadow puppet. And it's really easy to do. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the belt is from Northwest China, and it was made in 3rd century BCE. Cool facts. Awesome facts. All right, so the shadow puppet wolf. <laughs> I'm gonna show you, you need three things. You need your hands. You need a background like a wall. I'm gonna use my couch. And you need some extra light. But first, I'm gonna show you how to do the shadow wolf. So you're gonna take your hands, make them flat, like you're making a pancake. And then you're gonna take these top two fingers here and curl them in, just like that. So now your hands look like that. Keep them together and then this is a little trickier. If you move your pinky out like this, you can give your wolf a mouth. Now it doesn't look much like a wolf yet, but we're gonna add the extra light. Ooh. And so we do what we were gonna do with our hands. Pull those in, that out, and there's our shadow wolf. And you can see the twitchy ears, and you can see the nose that sniffs. <laughs> And then you see the mouth to eat vegetables and to do what else wolves do. What do they do? They go, oh! So you can practice your best wolf howl with your wolf shadow puppet friend. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us this story time with the Met. And we will see you all next time.